In the spirit of my previous episodes looking at German, Swiss and Soviet watches, this week's episode is a snapshot into the digital watches of India. Of course, you can't talk about Indian watches without talking about HMT, an abbreviation of Hindustan Machine Tools Limited. This was a joint venture between Citizen and HMT, a government-owned company using licensed Citizen calibers, later Miyota, which is obviously a division of Citizen. By all accounts, it seems to have taken the domestic manufacturers of watches like HMT and Titan a while to come around to jumping into digital watches, with other producers like Hector and Golay also not going into digital after some initial exploration. From this article from Insider at Hector and Golay, it also seemed like there were some regulatory and structural disincentives about going down this route as it risked undermining the publicly owned HMT. After the more premium digitals of the 70s, for example, here's an excuse to show off my lovely new Orient Solar, after being inspired by the Vintage Digital Watches YouTube channel, the 80s saw the margins very tightly squeezed with strong Japanese and Chinese competition. So it seems that the opportunity for digital watches in India at the time ultimately didn't add up. However, apparently in the early 1990s, there was a HMT digital range, which was the Astra series of watches. Now these are very hard to find, but here are some examples that I have been able to find with the help of some collectors. First, this alarm and chronograph lithium Astra model is very similar in shape to your classic Casio's, with the vertical text being a slight style difference to what I'm used to seeing. Second, this more basic lithium model, which has seen better days, but was the only example I could find. Third, this Astra Digigraph model is the only example I've been able to see of this watch, kind of like an Indian G-Shock Square in appearance. Fourth, this Pro Sport model seems to have been a little more commonplace, as there are a few more examples of it around that I've been able to see. And fifth, this Anna Digi model, very in line with similar models at Timex, Citizen, Glacita, and the like. There were likely more models. If you know more about the specifics of this range or have any advertisements from the time, let me know in the comments. I would love to see them. Now, I understand that the HMT watch division was closed down by the government in 2016 due to losses, but there does still seem to be a functioning website where you can buy the watches and there is a growing demand for these watches through eBay. It's definitely a brand I'm interested in exploring further on both the mechanical and quartz side. The other traditionally big player in the Indian market is of course Titan watches owned by the Tata Group. Now Tata is an interesting company in itself with a history that goes back to 1869 and tendrils into all sorts of markets from steel to Tetley's tea. Now if you're interested in learning more about Titan there is a great and detailed account of their history on Apple Books and other places for about £1.99. Outside of the watch specifics, it's an interesting business case study for the India market for sales and marketing folks. Now for the Tata Group's first inclination to get into the watch, that was around 1977 between two titans of the firm, apologies, Anil Manchanda and Circes Desai. After an initial attempt to acquire the previously mentioned Hegda and Golay, they managed to do a deal with the France Ebouchet Group in Besançon, home of the brand Lip which I've managed to make a reference to in nearly all of my videos. And this was to pursue a joint venture in manufacturing watches for the Indian market. However, it did seem to be the case that there was some resistance from the government to letting Tata into the market, and it wouldn't be until 1984 when an offshoot of the Tata group, Tidco, which got the joint project with the French Ebouchet SA group, signed off by the government which would result in the establishment of the brand Titan Watches in that same year of 1984. But it wouldn't be until 1987, I believe, when they would release their first watch, the Titan Classique, with other lines launched in the same year, including the Fast Track for the youth market, which we'll come back to, Exacta, Spectra and Royale lines. Now, Tata had done some exploration of the digital watch space in the mid-70s via their Singapore office, and spoke with Fairchild Semiconductor, but this was largely vetoed by the government who wanted to push them towards the use of the domestic National Physical Laboratory in Delhi for the display technology, where there was only lower quality Soviet displays available at the time, which actually I've discussed in other videos. Apparently, the Tata and Titan leadership considered this as a somewhat of a bullet dodged 
as that sector so quickly became unprofitable, but I do think it's sad that we missed out on a whole era of Indian digital watches in the 70s and 80s. Now, Titan's presence in the digital watch space was initially more via its involvement with Timex India. That relationship began after a drinks meeting, apparently, in 1990 between Anil Manchanda, Executive Vice President at Titan, and Lawson Campbell, at that time Chief Executive of Timex India, where they first tried to headhunt him before then discussing joining forces. They then actually had to get rid of their other partner that Timex had agreed to work with in India, which was Jaina Time Industries that were behind Jayco watches. As part of the deal, Titan moved out of the synthetic material watch base that they had a limited footprint in with the Acura brand, and they kept focused on the higher end market, primarily of metal, with Timex focusing on the more affordable end plastic cased watches. At this point, they'd established the Timex factory in Noida, and another important element that will explain some initial lack of digital style watches under Titan's own brand was that they were positioning themselves more as a fashion accessory with Timex being, quote, a wrist instrument exploiting digital net technology and focused on outdoors and lifestyle activity. I thought this was quite funny considering how Timex gets some heat these days for its repeated forays into the fashion market. We'll come back to Timex later, but it seems like the relationship between Timex and Titan was never really a fully trusting one, and things eventually broke down in the late 90s, with Titan introducing the Sonata brand in 1997, which was a lower-priced brand that would compete with the segment previously owned by Timex. There's minimal information I've been able to find on this, but you can find a whole bunch of Anadigi models and straight-ahead digital models from Titan under the Sonata brand, starting out with Sonata, the Super Fiber brand, a relaunch in 2010 with the Wait Matte Car or Don't Wait Attitude, and later evolution into the SF sub-brand in 2015 targeted at the Adventure Enthusiast. Outside of the Sonata range, there is the Fast Track range, where there's been a few digitals like those that you can see on the screen, watches in the Zoop range, which were designed for kids, and of course, there's also the Titan smartwatch, the Titan Juxt, a project commenced with the Hewlett Packard Group, which has an LCD display for the various smart notifications. And finally, there are fitness watches that are also smart style watches under the Track brand. You can see some of the advertising that they've gone big on in the background now. One very interesting one for me during the research was the so called Infi or Infi watch which in 2003 was given out to all of the employees of the Infosys company all at the same time, which was 25,000 people. This watch was especially commissioned to be able to show dual time that was able to include Indian standard time, which was a very weird one in that it was actually 5.5 hours versus GMT rather than being a whole number, which was a very interesting political decision at the time to try and have the same time zone across all of India despite large differences, which shows another example of time being used as a form of politics and power. Now they ordered a watch that would solve for this from Titan, and here it is. A digital watch that has a both dual time, including India standard time, as well as other times. Now we've mentioned them in passing, but let's double click again back into Timex India. Now some made in India models that were kindly shared to me by a subscriber that was absolutely the, the root behind this uh, video. Their details are on screen. And these include the Brave Wave model, the Marlin model, these Expedition and Zulu time models, Iron Man models, including within the Data Link series, this Anadigi model, and this CAT model, which I now know means the chronograph alarm timer. I think many of these were also manufactured elsewhere too, so now you know to check whether yours is a made in India model. Timex have more recently launched the Helix brand, primarily for the India market, which has a smartwatch iteration. And just this month, Timex announced a deal with Benetton to market some watches for the youth market in India with some digitals and anadigis included within that initiative. And that's all I've got for you today on this quick snapshot of India digital watches. I hope this gives you some leads if that is a geography that you're interested in. 
please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed. There's a minimal material on this topic I found, so if you know more, please do put your points in the comments. I'd love to hear more about this topic, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Oh.